Thank you so much. Welcome to church on such a glorious day to those of you who are here in the sanctuary and those at home or wherever you may be watching on social media. We're so glad you're here. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, We Are the Harvest. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. We are the harvest we reap. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the love that we seek. We are the seeds we are sowing. Good morning. We're delighted that you've joined us either here in person or on Facebook Live or Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, I think everywhere, please turn off the sound on your phone. That way we can all enjoy this time together without interruption. Thank you. And now uh, let's join together in prayer. Turning within, I find my true home. It's always there. It waits for me with open arms. It is warm and filled with love. It is the place where I know full well that God is all there is. In this place, I know that I am part of God. And all that God possesses is mine when I open to receive it. I plan never again to be the prodigal I have been in the past. It serves me better to live here and explore the world on occasion more than to live in the world and explore this home on occasion. Today, I open to receive more love, more wholeness, more compassion, and more awareness. To receive more love, I know that I must express more love. To receive more compassion, I must express more compassion. These expressions bring me wholeness and expand my awareness. Today, I am also open to all the good expressed through our dear Dr. Mark. I allow it to land and to stick and to carry it with me. So with a grateful heart and a happy spirit, I release my word into the law of mind, knowing the truth I have spoken 
can never be broken. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Please stand and join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the congregational song, Joy and Peace in My Heart. Joy and peace in my heart, always I
So now please be seated and join us in a meditation of about five minutes. Repeat to yourself, God is the love that I am.
discouraged, oh, I realize it's hard to take courage in a world full of people. You can lose sight of it all, and the darkness inside you can make you feel so small. But I see your true colors shining through. I see your true colors, and that's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. True colors are beautiful like a Show me a smile then Don't be unhappy Can't remember when I last saw you laughing If this world makes you crazy And you've taken all you can bear You call my name Because you know I'll be there And I see your true colors Shining through I see your true Thank you for being with us today. If you're here in the sanctuary or if you're in the virtual world, we are happy to have you with us. Um, you know, we teach in the science of mind that everything that happens out here, out on the outer plane, is an effect, that consciousness within us is cause. So we have created something right now on the face of the planet more destructive than our capacity to create the alternative. You know, at an earlier time, if we go back a few decades, not everybody had massive weapons, but now everybody does. You know, and so it seems to me that if we keep going down this direction that we are going, it's not going to end well for anybody. You know, and so it comes back again and again to how we are on the inside is what we experience on the outside. So every time I watch the news or hear something on the radio this week, uh, particularly about the Ukraine, I know that my job is I have to go in and say, okay, where am I at war? Where am I personally at war with some organization, institution, somebody? Where is it? Because I know, you know, the, you know the old saying that the generation that believes in war will not be the generation that brings peace, right? And so if there's any place in me where I'm at war, I am actually contributing to the trouble on the planet right now. So th this is really just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for me to clean up all of my relationships, to work even harder, to lift my consciousness so that there's nothing within me 
that contributes to that kind of chaos in the world out there. It has been difficult, I think, for humans to share. I think it's been difficult to live um, this, uh, in a country that for a very long time identified itself as a largely Judeo-Christian country to, to live that. I think it's been very difficult for people to forgive and get over the past. I think it's difficult for people to change inside. All of that said doesn't mean we don't have to do it, because I believe we do. But you know, um, so A Course in Miracles is a teaching that's similar to Science of Mind. Not identical, but very many, many similarities, and I like it very much. And this week I was reading a line in A Course in Miracles that just, uh, it just does a job on me every time I read it. It says, people would rather die than change their minds. Mm. And I look at that and I go, well, I know I can be pretty stubborn sometimes. Okay, I can be really stubborn sometimes. And I, you know, it's like, because I know best. I'm not gonna change my mind. I know best. Oh, darn it, I know, I know. You know, so the point, but you know what happens, I see again and again, is people, unwilling to change their minds, they just move into incredible suffering. Now, the point of the suffering, though, is for us to use it as an opportunity to turn to God, right? If we miss the opportunity to turn to God and raise our consciousness, then we've missed the whole point of going through the suffering. The suffering is absolutely a waste of time. See, humans, I believe, need to have faith in something greater than themselves that is not a person. Right? We have to believe in a higher power, a force of love and intelligence, a first cause, whatever it is. See, I believe that we're hardwired for connection to um, a higher power, just like I believe that we are hardwired to, to, to find our tribe on Earth. You know, that both of these things, I think, are really, really important for our own growth and our own development. We have to find um, what it is that we believe in that's greater than we are, and yet we are a part of it. And also, you know, find, well, you get the point. Um, find our tribe. Find our people, the people that we're going to do our growing with. Now, I know, we have a lot of people who come into our life who we think are not our people, and we do a lot of growing around them. But I'm also talking about particularly like, okay, where am I going and who's coming with me? You know, the people who are on the journey with me. Um, remember, evil is to God as darkness is to light. Our, and the potential within all of us, I think, is so amazing. Amazing. So, you know, um, I'm a big fan of Joel Goldsmith and his work. I've been reading his material for years. And one of the things that Goldsmith says is, thy grace is my sufficiency. The grace that God gives to us is absolutely enough for us. So grace, what is that? Well, one of the definitions of grace that I'm really fond of is this, that grace is unmerited favor. You didn't do anything to earn it. Isn't that great? You didn't have to show up a certain way, look a certain way, talk a certain way, blah, blah, and none of that. No, nope. it was unmerited favor. God is forever giving of himself to each and every one of us. So Goldsmith talks about this idea of living by grace. And so what does that mean? I think that living by grace, if grace is unmerited favor, is really, really trusting God. For what? For everything. For absolutely everything. Scripture says, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. All right? So another statement from Goldsmith, you know, this, this statement about thy grace is my sufficiency. What he's saying is that God is always giving us everything that we need. Always, always, always. This is a statement of belief that God does provide, that God will continue to provide. So we want to, you know what I see again and again is that, and we all know this story, and we all do it sometimes. We're all like the person who, you know, the flood comes, and God sends a rowboat, and God sends a canoe, and God sends a helicopter, and, and the guy refuses all of this help. Right? Because he's saying, no, 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 I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm trusting in the Lord. What do you think the rowboat and the helicopter and the canoe were? You know, that was God manifesting the grace to get you out of the difficult situation. <sighs> Another, um, let me say, so what, what is this grace? Ernest Holmes says that grace is the divine givingness of spirit. And I believe that what he means by that is that God only knows to give of God's self fully to each and every one of us. 
In this case, God is, we could say, so just for this example, God is he and we are she. God is the active energy and we're the receptive energy. God plants the idea within us and we give birth to the idea. So you see, this has nothing to do with male and female or anything like that, so don't charge me after service about that, I'm saying God is he. Um, there's no better or there's no worse. It's just, it's just a complete cycle of how the energy operates, yes? So God is giving to us all the time. And what is God giving all? God gives all, all the time. And so I know what you're thinking. It's the same thing I'm thinking. I was like, well, where is it? I could sure use it. You know, why, like I could, I could use like the, right here in, in the world of concrete form. So why don't I think I receive it? You know, what do I, well, what do I think it is? Do I think it's like a get out of jail free card? Do I think it's like my credit card paid off for the whole month? Um, Ernest Holmes says this about God. He says that God is both principle and presence. He says, God is the presence of love that we must court. And how we court that presence of love is through meditation. But God is, all a but God is also the principle of law. And he says that we have to work with that law intelligently. And how we work with the law intelligently is through the activity of treatment. Right? So how do we court that presence through meditation? And, but also through treatment. So we see it's love and law. It really is the combination of both. If you think of God, I've been working with this idea for a while, and it, and it stretches me. It really does. If you think of God as your beloved, doesn't your beloved want everything that is for your highest and greatest good? Yes, absolutely. And so would your beloved deny you anything? No, absolutely not. Now, what does the beloved want from you? Ah, your attention. Your attention, right? Because energy goes, energy flows or energy goes and all that sort of stuff. Or maybe we say it's our devotion. And by devotion, I mean an ongoing turning of our attention inward. Uh, I would say the same for worship. Remember, what you give your energy to expands, right? That's the law of worship. Whatever we give our energy to expands. So one of my um, early favorite sayings in the science of my textbook, I think it was probably one of the first things I memorized years ago, was when you learn to trust the universe, you shall be happy, prosperous, and well. And boy, it has been a journey to trust the universe. I got to tell you, it really has. I mean, some days I'm really trusting and I just know it's all going to be good and it's all going to work out and that's terrific and I love it when that happens. And then other days, my faith is not so much there. So we're currently experiencing, I think, a collective dark night as well as our own personal dark night. And now, this is not, we must not look at this as a punishment, but this is actually a, a birthing kind of grace. We experience renewal through death, rebirth, crucifixion, resurrection, experiences, and we have them again and again. So the Sufi poet Rumi said, the grapes of my body can only become wine after the winemaker tramples me. So I think our false, separate self can only be destroyed by love. That's what it is. See, there, and there's a roadmap through. There is a roadmap through the difficulty, and it is about loving. It's about us being of loving service in the world. It is about having more compassion. Because more light pours in, in a dark night process. See, because the dark is transformative if you can do three things. And this is what I come up with. Um, the three things you have to do are explore the map. You know, the map that we just talked about, about love, loving service, compassion. Um, explore the map with deep love and a deep mind. I think you have to do deep spiritual practice on an ongoing basis. This means that you make your inner life a priority and you show up for you for at least 10, 15 minutes a day and keep loving and serving. See, if we truly surrender to the dark night, I think we experience mercy. I think we ultimately will have experiences that really lift us up and we'll feel almost ecstatic, even blissful. See, because the dark night is a manifestation, I believe, of divine mercy. It's an opportunity that calls us home 
to, to really to this higher, more spiritually evolved place. I think people, people are terrified, you know? Um, they're overwhelmed. You might feel this way as well. Um, and if you do, I think the best thing you do is just surrender to it and let it wash over you. Because the truth is, while it's washing over you, you are not ever, ever helpless. You know, we want to use that overwhelm and say, wow, this is so big. This is so big. Clearly, humanly, I'm not going to deal well with this by myself. I need to open more to the principle, the power, the presence that God is. See, because shift can happen in, in the ferocity of, of a crisis, right? And, and I think we are in such a crisis right now. Everything is screaming for healing, no matter where you look. Is there anywhere we could look right now on the face of the earth that is not begging us for a greater expression of healing? So I think we need to have um, what I would call a cosmic-sized heart, right? We need to have a cosmic-sized love in order to be a bigger vessel for God. Why do we need to be a vessel for God? So we are the way that God puts more light and more love into the world. So often we think, you know, well, if it's not easy, clearly that means I'm not supposed to do it. I think that is just the most childish thing I've thought of today. <laughs> I, just don't, I just don't have experience that it works like that. Just because something is difficult doesn't mean we're not supposed to be involved or we're not supposed to do it. In fact, so often some of the most rewarding things, the, most, the experiences that we grow the most through are the things that are the most difficult. So there was um, a, a, a Catholic, uh, Christian mystic, uh, St. John of the Cross from the Catholic tradition, and he was trying to reform the, the Carmelite order. And in doing this good work, he was uh, captured by his fellow, fellow Carmelites and thrown into prison and beaten repeatedly. And we think, how could this be right? How could this be right? This guy's trying to do something really good, right? Um, and yet people are beating him up. What's the deal with that? So I think about it, I think, you know, he could become really resentful. He could be bitter and, you know, and, and filled with fear uh, and become like the people who were actually harming him. Or he could reject that and choose, regardless of all appearances, I will stay in a place of love in my mind and in my heart and in my consciousness. So he had to journey inward and love deeper than he had ever loved before. He had to be willing to love more than the people who were hurting him were hating. Right? And as he made that transformation, he was actually able to escape and continue his work. Right? So, but I know he wouldn't have been able to escape if all he did was sit in his cell and focus on how bad, wrong, and awful those other people were for what they were doing to him. See, I know the grace of God can change anything unto the last minute. Really, until the last minute. I don't know about you, but I need to be praying all the time, I find lately. You know, and, you know because really, when are, when are we not healing something, right? And if we tell the truth. We want to have a level, I think, of spiritual maturity to have our own inner spiritual life. See, because this lets us have an experience of love that may be foreign to other people, even the people who are closest to us. If we have our own inner spiritual life, right? I think we, we'll have an independent heart and an independent mind. And with this, we must know that where we belong and where we, where we don't belong. You know, it just becomes so apparent. See, it's okay to recognize that something is not for you. I do that all the time. You know, I, I realized I had to do this with a relationship a while back that, oh my gosh, this relationship is not for me. And I got to tell you, it was excruciating but it, to let that relationship go, but it was the right thing to do. See, because I didn't want to be the way that relationship was kind of pushing me to be. See, God is always saying, spirit, truth, is always saying, look unto me. And when we do, we become the place where God is revealed, where God is informing us. So if I stop, if I just stop for a minute and I say, okay, what thought comes to me? Is it a thought that's going to lift me up and add more light and more love, more positivity to the world? Or is this a thought that's going to take me down the drain? It's going to add more darkness, more fear, more doubt to me, to my world, to the world, to, to our experience. So Emma Curtis Hopkins gives this little instruction, and, and boy, like so many of her things, it seems so simple, but I find it to be so powerful. 
She says, when you are confronted with the stuff of the world, she says, what we must do is we have to look up. Now, she's not really talking about a look up. But what she's saying is we have to raise our vision above the material world, above the world of form, above the world of effect. We have to look to a higher place. And when we look to a higher place, we will be informed from that higher place. But we will be guided. We will be directed from that higher place. So this, the whole point of this is that we want to take time on a regular basis for God to give us God's thoughts. I realize for so many, and I know that many people realize this now, that we are in a time that we have to really, really concentrate, bring our best energy in order to evolve through this time. Now, when I ask myself, is am I dedicated to the personal changes that are necessary? Yeah, I think I am. I really think I am. So I've been going through my whole life looking and saying, OK, is there anybody anywhere that I am not willing to forgive? Is there anybody anywhere I am not willing for them to be deliriously happy? Is there anybody anywhere who I think, for some reason, they should not have their dream? And just, I just try to turn it over every way I can so that I realize, OK, there is nothing in me. There is nothing in me that's at war with anybody else. Hmm? I think we have to look again and again at what we're grateful for. Because you know what we're grateful for increases. We teach that. So uh, early on in the road to personal growth and self-development, uh, I came across Werner Earhart. And Werner Earhart used to say this. He says, you can live your life out of circumstances or out of vision. Mm. So if we live our life out of circumstances, we're always at the effect of things outside of us. We're always playing catch up. We're always trying to fix. We're always trying to pull it together. But if we live our life out of vision, a vision for what's possible, a vision for what we could be, a vision for what the world could be. So if we want the world to be kinder, if we want the world to be more compassionate, if we want the world to be more loving, and who doesn't in this room anyway, we need to be, we need to be more of that. This is something that I realized. This is what keeps us out of a kingdom consciousness. The human personality loves to have somebody to be the scapegoat. If, I mean, look historically. We, do, we love to have somebody say, they're the problem. They're wrong. They're doing it. But if we come back to the teaching and look honestly at ourselves and say, what I see out here, I know is a reflection of something in me. But if that doesn't exist in me, it will not be reflected out here. This is why how the world gets better is when each person gets better. Right? So everyone, everyone is worthy of love. You know, your heart is not something you need to hide from the world. It's actually your gift to the world. That's what makes the world a better place, when the gift of your heart and your love is expressed. So we can make it through anything, I believe, if we don't do it alone. Let's join together in prayer now, OK? So we turn our attention inward for a moment, just focusing on the Spirit of God, the presence of God, the presence of love and peace and consciousness that is the truth of who and what we are. And so in this connection, awareness of our connection with God, the good, the greater, I know we are also all connected on the unseen side of life. And so in the mind and the heart that is God, there is only one. And that one is all of us. We're all it. So I speak this word for each and every one of us today that we know <clears throat> that the grace of God is upon us. And that the unmerited favor of God, God knows only to give abundantly, fully, completely to each and every one of us, and we are open, willing vessels to receive the gifts of God this day. Nothing is withheld. You know, it never, ever enters into divine consciousness to hold back the good. So we ourselves open to receive the blessings of God, and we take a deep look within ourselves and see where are we not being the most conscious, loving person we could be. And is there anything right now today that we could let go of? Any thought about someone, any belief about someone, that they are not worthy of love? Because the truth is, God looks at every one of us and loves all of us because God created us. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, everyone we hold near and dear. And we surround them with a mantle of love and healing, knowing that God within them is the most true, real thing. 
We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we are living in. So in particular today, we focus our attention on the Ukraine. And we speak our word, the word of God, the quality of God that is peace. And we claim peace is operating everywhere in the world. It starts in us and ripples out from us all the way around the globe to the Ukraine, to the Soviet Union, to all people everywhere. And so today we speak our word of blessing for our church. All churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all people on the path and even those who are not on the path, we know that's their path. And we say God is right there. Blessing, uplifting, healing, restoring, revealing itself as peace. So with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Life. Oh, let me start again. Ooh. <laughs> okay. I was deep in prayer, so it's like opening my voice back up. Okay. You build your life on faith and dreams that things will turn out right. You work real hard to do your job in hopes that you'll survive. People like to come along and tell you it's no good. They try to shake your confidence as if they thought they could. But baby, you can do it. You can do it. There is nothing, nothing to it. You can do it. You can do it. There is nothing, nothing to it. Those who say it can't be done, that you should change your plan, may feel confined in their own mind, afraid to take a stand, but if you've got a dream inside that's really driving you, accelerate, don't you hesitate, it's waiting to come true, cause baby, you can do it with me, try it, you can do it, there is nothing, nothing to it, you can
Have a great day. Thank you, Sam and Karen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Inspired here, inspired there. <laughs> so inspired. Um, thank you, Susan. You can get Susan's music streaming anywhere and everywhere. I won't name them all, but they're all of them. And uh, don't forget that she has a website, unlimitedsusanedwardsmartin.com. Check that out. And she's written a wonderful musical. And uh, I can't say enough. You. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you, Sam and Karen. OK. <laughs> If this is the first time at our church, we're delighted you're here. Please stop by the welcoming table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. For all the ways you can make a donation to our church, go to nhcrs.org slash give. <laughs> Prayer with a practitioner is available after service in person and on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, just switch over to Zoom. Wednesday evening service and book signing with practitioner emeritus Daryl Gurney. Meditation will start at 6.50, the service at 7. Join us this week with an amazing service with practitioner author Daryl Gurney. His topic is the incredible lightness of starting, a spiritual imperative. Daryl will be signing and selling his book, The Back 40, after service, or you can purchase it on Amazon. The grief support group on Zoom is today at 1 o'clock, facilitated by practitioner Carol Winnaker. We have a new class coming up, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, with Reverend Sidney Steen. This five-week only class starts Tuesday, March 22nd, in person and on Zoom. Join Reverend Sidney for this brand new, exciting class. You will learn how to apply science of mind principles, practices, and methods to transform your life in the areas of relationships, prosperity, and health. Everyone is welcome. Sign up on our website. The cost is $170 and the class counts toward practitioner training. There will be a Good Friday service following, followed by a fundraising dinner. WWJE, what would Jesus eat? <laughs> <laughs> a four course Middle Eastern ash dinner. I don't quite get ash. Entertainment. <laughs> Entertainment by Tina Meeks. Remember her? <laughs> Tickets available next week. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. And Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday from 7.55 until 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org, to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Okay, that's the end of those. Now for our peace song. Please rise. <laughs>
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you.